farmsteaders. Hola. We are Mac. San Jose. And we are Uper Country Farms. Yep. Today we are at the Hagland Sap Shack and we are learning about making maple syrup because the first crop of the season, Uncle, is what? Maple syrup. First right. agricultural crop in the spring in the UP. In the it's Upers. That's what everybody does on the farms. And tell us who you are. I'm Harry Hagland, and I'm a fifth generation sapper. Been making maple syrup for generations. And we are going to be part of the sapping crew this year. How long do you think the sapping season will last? Well, it, it averages between four to five weeks, sometimes less. The weather, once it warms up and stays warm at, at night, you gotta have the freezing nights and uh, warm days above freezing. Once that comes to a stop, and that can be anywhere from three, four, five weeks. Nice, we're ready, we're excited. Yep. My favorite time of year. We'll be setting up this display today and getting ready because we're going to be tapping in a couple days we're going to tap about 250 trees or so so tell me what makes what indicates to you that it's time to tap when the snow pulls away from the trees and the temperatures at night you want freezing temperatures at night and above freezing during the day so if you get a 20 degree night and a 45 during the day when a light southerly wind that's perfect the trees will just in you know just really give the sap a tree will give on a, on a average year a tree like that will give you about 10 gallons of sap and it's 40 gallons of sap to make one gallon of syrup wow. and as you'll see as we get next time around will be when we get up and boiling and get up and running and then it gets more I call it magical because that's what I, from the school kids, the magic happens in the sugar shack. <laughs> that's where the candy is made and the syrup and kids like that. Old railroad pitcher. They built a lot of aluminum. It's especially for when they serve maple syrup on the train cars. It's almost like the same one you get at IHOP nowadays. <laughs> this tree here, as you can see here, it's 16 inches. I'm using a tree caliper that I built to, for training for the school kids. And like I say, 16 inches, you can see where you can put two taps in it. 10 inches, you can tap one. And a, a tree to get 10 inches, a maple tree, is about 40 years old. What I'll do is pick a spot. You don't want to tap where there's a, a existing tap hole. You try to stay a little bit away from them. As you can see, there's one here. What I'll do is I'll probably tap one right here. Looks like a good spot. And I tape, I run my bit just on a little bit of an angle. And this is called a bracing bit. It's my grandpa's old bit and drill that he used to tap trees with. You see this white bark coming now? That's what they call the sap wood in the, in the maples, the hard maple. You gotta drill into the sap wood, you drill in about two inches. And then what I do is I'll take a, just a piece of stick or something, and what I'll do is I clean it. You don't want, you don't want to leave that shavings from the drill bit in there. And then what we'll do is I'm going to set a tap in there. This is called a spiel, or I call them taps, and that's a tap driver. What I'll do is I set that in there, and I just snug it up. As soon as it stops, I quit. And then what I do is, sometimes you gotta squeeze the tree. There it goes, see? 
Got her going now. And this is what we use to collect it in, ice cream pails. Us supers eat a lot of ice cream. And it's a good food grade pail to use. But see, we got a pretty good drip going there. Let me squeeze it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Squeeze it a little mm -hmm. more. Yeah, yeah, got it's it's coming, it's coming more. And sap in a tree is sterile. So there's nothing, no bacteria, nothing that can hurt you. Sap is running about two, two and a half percent sugar, usually. And maple syrup is 66.5, so you gotta boil a lot of water off. But then we hang, like I say, our collection buckets on the trees. Oh, wow, 12 and a half. All right, I think I'm ready. You ready? Yep. Okay. Uh, what is the switch? Where's this? Uh-huh. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. oh, this is going to be a really long video. <laughs> <laughs> He's looking for the switch. you will yeah. be a while. <laughs> I don't remember the word. Slightly upward angle. Oh, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Just try to just put your hand here uh -huh. and just. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I, I was wrong. Yep. Yep. It's just a knack. Yeah. Grandpa taught me. You, you're getting pretty good angle, but yeah. that's okay. See the white? Mm -hmm. That's the sapwood you're into. Oh, a little more. Mm -hmm. uh, right in there is good. good okay. Give it a back turn a little bit and then pull it right out. Okay. Looks oh. like Jose picked a good tree. Yeah. He knows he got an eye. He's going to be an old sapper. Yeah. <laughs> Just like his uncle. Need a more? And one more tap. There you go. Wow. Oh, why not? That's his first tree. He gets the. <laughs> Ta da! He eats a lot of ice cream too. Yeah, can I get you up now? Yeah. <laughs> These are my sleighs. Aluminum sleigh. This is, uh, we're going to be hauling some wood later on tonight. We're going to load a crib up wait, in the shop. Wait, shack. wait, 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 what? You didn't say we were working while we were here. Uh-oh. You said we were going to come <laughs> over, maybe tap a tree and have a beer. I don't, did you hear work? No. Whoa. We better than to hey, if I told you you were going to work, you wouldn't come. That's probably true. Okay. I'm smarter than that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're, we're going to haul some wood on this. Yep, this is my wood sleigh. I'll be pulling behind a snow machine. I built this out of aluminum, nice and light. Oh, it's froze in. And this is the one we haul a sap out with. My tanks will go in here. I got a board in and my foam will go around it. And I put two 25 gallon tanks. I can bring 50 down at a time. This was an aluminum satellite dish. Dad made me that. These are the snowshoes we made. We went out in the woods and got a ash tree. You, you made this? Yep, yeah. and we had, a, we had a guy, a local guy with a bandsaw cut it, and so we custom made these. And you know, so uh -huh. we put our logo on it, and see, these are hers. Oh. We make sure we don't get them mixed <laughs> up. She don't want me wearing hers. Yeah, I see that. I so we want. have, we made his and hers. See, these are my coolers. We pull up with that sleigh, you'll see later on, because we, when we pull up with our sleigh, we unload here. I got hoses that attach here. I can pump inside or outside. And I have barrels in here. I can show you. 
Maybe you'd be better over there in the light. These are, uh, this is where I store the sap, the raw sap in, in a cooler here in these barrels. These are food grade barrels. And sap you have to keep at a cool temperature and you can only keep sap for a couple days, three days at max. It depends on the temperature. The warmer it is, the quicker it'll grow bacteria. There's a couple things that make your syrup dark. One thing is to keep it light is time over heat. And the other thing is if you, uh, if you boil it hard and the foam goes up and down on the side of the pan, you'll get a caramely, it'll get a dark. And another thing is if your sap goes bad and it gets dark because of the bacteria starting to grow in the sap. And that's why maple syrup is graded by color and flavor. So the lighter, the higher grade. I like to make the lighter and that's what they use a lot of times for making candy, stuff like that, fudge. The suckers, we make the maple suckers and the little more amber is what you use on pancakes. It gets a little more caramely than people like them on pancakes. Mm. And then the dark, they use for cooking. And I've explained to you when the sap, when, when the sap, right? Okay, when it's time to pull the taps is another thing. What I do is I look up in the top of the trees and when the buds come out. When you, you top of the trees will start getting like a reddish color you see from the buds popping. And once the buds come out, the sap, they call it, the old timers call it the bud run. They used it for coffee, but to make syrup with it, it gets a real strong smell and taste. So when you're, if you're gonna tap, yeah, that's what you watch for. These are all, you can tap maples, different maples. These are sugar maples. These are the higher grade maple. But you can tap a soft maple, silver maple. And like I was saying, this is my pumping station. I have a remote set up here. We're just getting started, so <laughs> everything, as when I put turn the water on in the shack, that's when we're gonna start sanitizing everything before we start bringing the sap in. But this is my, I could start my compressor inside for my pumps and my UV light and pump. Just, I use a UV light on the sap because if there is any bacteria started, it'll knock it out and I can keep the sap a little bit longer. But anyway, this is, this is my remote control. I've made all this stuff. I put this stuff together. Uh, everything in the shack is homemade. I worked at a mill and they, we had a big machine shop and whatever we needed stuff. The, the mill was really good to me because of the school kids coming here. So if I needed anything, they would, the guys would help me. It worked out really well because I customized everything how I wanted it. As you'll see throughout the sapping season, what we're doing and, you know, you get more familiar with things. I want you, I want to go through everything with you and just show you. So tell me when you first started sapping. My, your dad and my brother Gary, and I, when I was 10, he was 11, my grandpa made us a pan because we wanted to be on our own. And we went out and we tapped about 20 trees and we did shifts on it. So Gary took the first shift. He woke me up at midnight. I had the midnight shift and I'm out watching. I get the fire going good and I'm hungry. So I go in to make a sandwich, sat on a couch and fell asleep. Well, Gary woke me up. We run out there and we had burnt the sap, oh, burnt the no. syrup. My first batch I burnt, but I did learn a lesson. Not to fall asleep. Yep. <laughs> But yeah, we, we've been doing it for, it, it's actually come down to my grandma's side and there's about five generations of it wow. got passed on. And when you purchased this property that you're on, you knew you wanted to be sapping. There used to be an old sap shack right there. We tore it down and put this, built this one here because we wanted a bigger, nicer one to teach the kids. Uncle, what is it we have here? We have blueberry beer from a microbrewery from the East Channel 
brewery in Munising. Mm. That's that's my favorite beer. They make really good beer. They, they made beer two years ago from my from my sap and my syrup, and it was excellent. You had to really like that. They're they're gonna do it again this year. They said. Oh, nice. When I get extra sap, I call them and they come and pick it up, and then they'll do a batch. And we'll definitely it, try that. It out. went quick. <laughs> so tell me what's in the bag real quick here. This is blueberries that we went out. These are wild blueberries. We went out on the plains, out in the Kingston Plains and picked them last year. And uh, for pies and and to put in my beer. I like that too. And blueberry muffins. All right. Mm. Mm. To, to, to the new, to the sapping season this year, to the 2021 sapping season. Uh-oh. <gasps> we got what caught. Happened? Jose caught us drinking his beer. <laughs> Is he good? It's really Got good. Right there. Oh, wow. So you're all set. So Hold wow. on, let's let's do a cheers to Cheers, cheers. to the Sapin season. Yeah. To the new crew. To the new crew. <laughs> new crew members. Uper Country Farms. Yep. Wow. Mm. It's good. You like it's it? got mm -hmm. blueberries in it. Mm -hmm. In the syrup. The sugar content is at 66.5 percent sugar uh -huh. that's on a brick scale if if you go too high if you go up to like 69 percent sugar you'll start getting little crystals in it sugar crystals oh yeah wow and if you if you don't go that high uh -huh. if you don't go to 66.5 if you're in the 50s or something they'll start you get mold <laughs> So do you have uh, like on balance? Yep. yep. And I use a, like I say, a refractometer mm -hmm. that'll tell me the exact percent sugar. In the syrup, like I had explained earlier, is graded by color and flavor. Mm -hmm. And if you look here, you have the, it'd be double A amber. This is your medium grade A, medium amber. And this is your grade B. This is dark. That's how I like my beer. Dark? Yeah. Well, it's this is what they use for cooking, the dark stuff here for beans. Like I always call it a bean batch when we burn one. <laughs> and, you know, like my brother and I did when I was 10. Uh -huh. And this one here is for your pancakes. And, and the, the lighter grade, like I try to make here, is what we use is for making the suckers and the candy. And, and I, I like it on pancakes. It's to me, is, uh, to me, it has the pure maple syrup taste. But everybody has their own taste in it, so I can't. It's my preference, but some come here and they say, "Oh, we like the darker," and it's it's all good. Yeah. I don't have a complaint with none of it. Well, Jose, this is an adventure I'm really excited about. Yeah, me too. To be tapping the trees and learning to do maple syrup because I really think maple syrup is a big part of Uper culture. It is. So if you are a homesteader or a farmsteader, you love the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, or you just think Jose and me and my uncle are pretty Harry. funny. <laughs> oh, okay, well, I'm not ready for you to say Harry yet, just so you know. In a minute, Harry. In a minute, Harry. If you, if you think we're kind of funny, we hope that you will subscribe to our channel. Please. Please. Again, we are Mac. And Jose. Harry. <laughs> <laughs> and we are Uper Country Farms. Thank you for watching. You want to see my John Wayne side? Oh. <laughs> wow. Delete. Delete. <laughs>